All righty, everybody. Welcome back to the group. I'm going to be answering the questions for those of you that asked. Looks like we got a little bit more, um, but everyone's DMing me and trying to call me and ask me all these questions, but need to be in the group here. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, the first question is from Lucas Arias, my brother. Um, five years ago, did you see yourself in the position that you are in today? Um, five years ago. No, definitely not. Um, I don't even think a year ago I saw it. I mean, I think when I was younger, I, I knew, you know, that I was going to do well and that, um, I just needed to stick with it and just stay consistent. But I didn't know necessarily the logistics of where I would be at currently right now. Um, but there's a Tony Robbins quote I like that says, um, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. So I think I understood that at a young age that I didn't need to get there, you know, right away. But I also knew that if I just stayed consistent, even if it was just little habits that I was developing, um, that I would be able to, you know, start to create financial freedom and do what I want. And just even now, like in real time, um, I feel like just this next year is just going to go nuts. Like I feel like this year was just like warm up and just like, you know, testing stuff out and, you know, we hit six figures, but I think next year it's for sure going to be just way better, more systematized. So not necessarily, but for those of you that want to get into business or just entrepreneurship, you have to envision it. I showed you guys yesterday, or if you're on my Instagram, you know, if or if you're not on my Instagram, you got to go follow me there. Um, but if you are, you've already seen, you know, it's like every day, it's like I'm writing, you know, so you have to envision it, you have to believe it. And, you know, there's actually another quote by Tony Robbins that says that your mind and your brain can literally not distinguish between reality and actuality. So whatever you focus on is what you're going to feel, what you're going to create, what you're going to manifest into your life. You obviously have to create action and do it and, you know, that whole thing. Um, but that's a huge deal for people as they don't realize that what they're doing now is affecting them in the long run. So there is the answer for that. Thank you, my brother. Rue, ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Rue says, if you hate cold calling, what are some of the other good alternatives? Um, messaging people on Facebook, on their business page, that's a good alternative posting valuable content on your Facebook or your Instagram um, so that people come to you. Um, I would say if you just absolutely cannot call people, um, find their cell phone number on Google and just kind of do some digging and um, try and text them. That also can work, but at some point you will have to call people and I think, um, yeah, cold calling is a good way to kind of get comfortable on the phone. But yeah, I don't think you have to do it. So I would say messaging, um, you know, messaging people, um, texting them, Facebook will work really well, friending them. But yeah, I would say most of what you would be doing in that realm would be messaging um, you know, unless you start like mailing out letters and stuff. So messaging for sure, how to get clients that are not local, simple, do not advertise local, you know? So if you're trying to call people local, then you're going to get people that are local. But if you don't call local and you focus on out of state, out of country or out of, um, you know, maybe it's 30 minutes away or 40 minutes away, that's how you're gonna get people that are not local, is if you start showing people what you do that aren't you know, necessarily local. So um, that's kind of a simple answer to that, but 
you know, I run my client acquisition funnel all across the U.S. Um, because I just do. I think it works better, and I like having clients in different states because I don't have to like, you know, yeah. I just I like it. So I would say that. Um, Simon, tips for outsourcing my agency's Facebook ads without using Upwork or other websites like that. Um, what you can do is go into Facebook groups and you can find like a Facebook ad ninjas group or, you know, depending on whatever your niche niche is, finding groups around that and just um, I would create a simple click funnels page that has a questionnaire on it and have people apply there. So for instance, go to a Facebook group, get accepted, tell them what you're working on, the project you're working on, tell them you're looking for a long form employee um, or a long term employee that you want to develop and train and do mentorship with. Um, and then say click here on my link and just have a video of you there. And just say this is what you're looking for. This is what you're you know want to do. And there's questions below. I want to see how good or how much experience you have in this field. So fill that out. And once you do that, you'll be taken to my calendar, and then they can book with you. So automation is always key. Always think about how to automate something before you just start getting into it. Why are you so handsome, Usman? I think that will des deserve a unsubscribe, man. I'm not sure about that question, though. You could ask my girlfriend. Um, Umar Ahmed, digital marketing. How can I join training? You're in the training right now. Lucas, what was the hardest obstacle to overcome during the beginning stage of building your business? Um, that's a good one. The hardest obstacle is being able to say no and not feeling like you're hurting people's feelings, um, you know, based upon, you know, just maybe your story or what you believe. But I think that's been the hardest thing is just being able to tell people no, being able to really, um, you know, be clear on what it is that you want to provide and saying no to things in the meantime um, that possibly could get you, you know, more money, but essentially won't really allow you to, um, you know, necessarily thrive because you're you're managing different components. So I can get more technical on that. Um, but basically, you know, when I started off, we we're doing video, real estate photography, and then I developed like my lead generation business. And I think, you know, there were clients that weren't really qualified for the service that I would take on just because we're just trying to bring in as much business um, that now we're at the point where we want to start to choose who we're working with a little bit more, not like insanely, but just like you want people that you want to work with. Um, but I think for those of you just starting out, like just take whoever you can get because the whole way that you're going to move your business forward is when you get that check or that, you know, that new client. So that was probably the hardest thing was just like, you know, being comfortable saying no to people and telling like, saying no to like potential money, just like right there. Um, you know, similar to just anything in life, just like, sometimes you just have to say no and understand that something better will come from it. But in the moment, it doesn't necessarily always seem like it'll pan out that way. So that's one thing here. This camera makes like, I don't know, it's like angled weird. But anyway, um, Ethan Smith, generating leads for your agency, complete process. Ethan, you just want all the gold. Some of you guys just want all the gold and just want it for free, man. Um, so for those of you that have been asking about my client acquisition funnel, or my um, mainly that or just other questions like that, you know, I, I, I could tell you, but it's just I mean, I've spent tons of time and it's just worth it's valuable, you know, it's valuable. So for those of you interested in that I do 
like one-on-one -on -one consulting um, where I can take you through just kind of how to create your own, you know, and just basically guide you one-on-one. -on -one. So I guess I could just kind of get into that. But like I said, this is a free group where I'm just trying to get people inspired to get out there, you know, and just start, just start making it happen. But it's a simple landing page, you know, and it's a webinar that I just finished. And it, it basically shows people, um, you know, what I do, how I do it, and, you know, has a call to action for a scheduler. So it's not as hard as people think, but to get it exactly how I have it, um, you know, it, it takes time, it takes money. And I spend a lot of money to learn how to do it. And um, I'm not just gonna like, all right, everybody, here it is, because it's kind of like if somebody gave you like a Ferrari for your first car, like, yeah, you could use it and it could work, but it's not gonna come at the time where it's really part of who you are. So I'm a big believer in embodiment and that, you know, you have to be ready for something for it to really, you know, come to you in a way that makes sense. So um, if you're just starting out and like, here's your funnel, plug it and play, um, you're not going to really understand the systems, the thought process behind it. You're not going to understand why um, this is this way. You're not going to get the sales process. You're not going to be able to deliver a good service. So just all those things, there's like, I don't, I don't like that idea of just giving people it, but yeah, click funnels, landing page, webinar, about 40 minute sales presentation and a call to action to my scheduler. So that's as simple as I can make it and you can get results just by taking that. Um, Oscar, hey Quinn, I should do two meetings, right? An information type meeting first, then presenting my plan in the second. And the first meeting, how can I provide, okay, wait, what's, should, I should do two meetings, right? Mm, you could, you could do five, you could do as many as you'd like. Um, I'm not sure there's any one size that fits all. Um, then present my plan. Um, I would say don't present too much of your plan. You want to tell people what they can do, but you don't want to tell them exactly how to do it. You just want to get people to believe that it works. Um, you know, but I wouldn't. So let me try to understand in the first me I'm going to provide. So I'm assuming in the first meeting, you're talking about some sort of like, um, I'm assuming you're talking about some sort of like discovery call or, you know, like just, just getting information from them and talking about what you do. Um, it could work that way, but i let me just tell you the ideal way that you would do this. Okay. You would get a lead online. Um, depending on on the way you would set it up. Ideal wor world, you get in, meet a lead online that has already watched your video, they book a call, and you know, when they book that call, there's a bunch of questions, and you call them, say, hey, Oscar, thanks for, uh, you know, booking the call with me. I'd like to get to know a little bit more about you. I see here that you've sold, you know, 15 homes this year and you, you're making this much money and your goal is to do this and this and this, this is your price point, blah, 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 blah. You know, and you just start getting that information from them um, or just like reiterating the fact that that's what they filled out. And you just say, so let me tell you exactly what we do, how the price works and, you know, just take you through our service. Is that something you're cool with? And just when you get somebody be like, yeah, then you can just sell. So I would say for information type meetings, um, if anything, you want to gather as much information about them so you can leverage it in your sales call. So for example, you could get that information from them and see, okay, look, this is what is important to them. This is how much money they're making. So then on that call, you can say, hey, so 
you know, based on what you told me last time on the phone that this is important to you, this is this, and we have this service that helps people like you, you know, take their business from X, you know, without having to Y. And I wanted to see if this is something you want me to kind of share with you and, you know, if you're open to that and then boom. So hopefully that helped. Um, David, how do you make slash create the funnel? Is it a website or an ad type? And what do you promise businesses when calling them more business or internet presence? How do you create the funnel? Um, you create a funnel with click funnels. For those of you trying to support this, none of you still have signed up for click funnels. So you if you guys want to help me out, you know, click the click funnels thing. That's what you guys are gonna need anyway. And I don't even I make like 20 bucks off of it, so it's not like it's a big deal, but um it helps helps out the group and stuff like that. Um so you make a funnel with click funnels. Um and what I promise businesses when calling them. Um, I mean, my service, I just promised the service that they would get 100 leads. Um, I don't do any internet presence or any of that stuff. So creating the funnel is clickfunnels.com. Um, I'll put the link below this video to do a free trial, but um, it's super easy to do that there. Um, and I also have a, other videos on how to create a landing page. That's basically a funnel. How would I get more attention on, or he doesn't have his name or she doesn't have her name. How would I get more attention online or get my name out there more? How does YouTube fit into digital marketing? Would starting a YouTube channel help? Well, the way you get your name out there, dude, is you got to have a name on your Facebook thing first. So kind of missed the ball on that one um and as far as like legitimately getting it out there i mean you have to tell people what you're doing you gotta show it you gotta take out your phone and do an instagram story i mean it's just it's part of what you have to do so you know if you want to get your name out there you have to tell people what you do you have to share with them the value you can bring them and their business and the more you do that the more basically you know people will be begin to see that information and you know start to tell people and they'll start to look at you as the person that does x so i would say that my friend youtube fits into digital marketing really well um youtube's an extremely powerful platform i spend the most time on youtube more than any other platform 100 percent youtube channel would help depending on what your goal is so if your goal is to become like youtube famous and be you know make a personal brand then yeah but if your goal is to like make 10 grand and have an agency no it wouldn't really help jose rodriguez how did you develop your technique for generating realtor leads i don't know if you mean for my clients or for myself but I will answer both. The way I developed it was putting my own money on the line. A lot of you guys in here don't want to put your own money on your on the line, want me to tell you for free. I mean, you guys should be paying for my consulting. Just wait till I raise my prices and I have less time, um, you know, and, and I'm doing more stuff. So, I mean, you have to spend money to make money. You got to invest in learning from people that are better. So I started spending my own money on my own ads and that was how I started learning because I didn't want to lose money um, and then as far as for the clients just testing and just the same thing I don't want them to lose money I don't want to lose a client so I had to see you know I just spent 400 bucks today in one hour on this guy that taught me you know what he's doing so I'm actively learning I'm actively spending my own money so for those of you that want to go to the next level, you actually want to like make money and not just get free information, you got to pay me to do a consulting. I mean, I can't just sit there for an hour and help you for, you know, for free. I My time's worth, you know, it's valuable. So in the same way that yours is too. So 
you should value yours. When you start to pay people for time, you start valuing your own and you start realizing like what's possible. So, you know, it's kind of a side rant or whatever, but that's just what I believe. You got to find people that are doing it better for sure. How do you feel that influence? Do you feel that influencers or ads are more effective? Um, influencers are super powerful. They're super underpriced. Um, if I mean, I think you have to do an ad with an influencer to do something. I ultimately think influencers will always win because they exist regardless of the platform. But I think what you're talking about is like which one would work better for your drop shipping store. Try both, you know, and try good pages, not just meme pages, um, you know, but do really good on your retargeting and that's going to help more than anything. Luke, how do you attract and close high ticket clients that are begging for social media marketing? Well, the begging part is a headline that marketers use to make it seem like they have clients that are begging um i do have a few people that i've kind of like begged for like like um lead generation and stuff but you're not going to really find somebody that is like oh my god i mean you can actually but it's not like you still have to sell them you still got to do the same thing so um, but how to attract them and close them on high ticket deals. Um, you have to be comfortable, you know, you have to be able to say, look, I charge, um, you know, $2,500 a month and I'll get you a hundred leads and you have to believe it and they have to believe it. And, you know, the belief really comes from you. But if you're like uncomfortable and you're like, I charge, um, uh, 20, uh, 2500 a month, um, dude, they're going to be like, get out of here. So you got to be able to be in there like, you know, when they ask you, so what's the service fee? 2500 you know? You have to just be able to say it, just 2500 And just sit there silently until they say something. 2500 And then they're like, uh, and then they, they start, so that's like, yeah, but you can only find these people with frequency. That's what I'm saying. I don't know where everyone's at in this group, but I just guarantee you, if you looked at your activity and you actually measured it out, you're not doing what you know you need to do to make money. So when you start looking at it simply, it's just, you are where you are because you deserve it and it's not good or bad but you know i just did the screen stop recording or what all right i for some reason it paused so yeah for those of you guys that are like wondering and just question you have to take action i mean the writing stuff down is is dope that's why I do it. But you have to like map out what you need to do. And that's why I'm saying for those of you that need help, that need that structure, just pay me. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Like pay me. I'll take you through what you need to do. You'll do it. You'll make more money. And then you'll wonder why you never had done it in the first place. So don't sit there and just question it. Like, you know, invest in me, invest in someone else, whoever. But you got to take action, you know? So Cameron, from an agency point of view, I've got a client that was super excited after three meetings met with their sales guy. I sent over the invoice and contract and they haven't even viewed it. I followed up over text and called, but both had no answer. What should I do? Mm, you should send them a video and just say, hey, you know, I thought we had an amazing three meetings. I met with your sales guy, Rick, you know, and I sent you guys an invoice and it seemed like we're ready to go. You know, I'm ready to put in the work and, and get this thing going. Are you guys still on board with this? You know, I don't want to waste my time chasing you around, um, you know, so I want to know if this is something you want to do. If not, no worries, um, but I need to know because I have other stuff I need to do and other clients that 
you know, need help. So, you know, if you want to do this, let's do it. Let's get this thing rolling. But if not, just tell me straight up how it is and we're good, man. So that's one approach. You could say that's more like straight. You could say, I mean, everything, you can always twist it. You could say, hey, brother, you know, I know that uh, you're busy and you probably haven't time to see the invoice or the contract. Um, you know, I did send it five days ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resend it um, and then we can get started today. And then so you could try like soft, you could try hard, you could say whatever. So I would just say that if they've done that, you got to sell them. You got to really sell them and you got to get them and lock them in. Don't lose that client, you know. How often will you be talking and spreading your knowledge? Um, it depends, you know, it depends on how long I think every day on my Instagram and stuff. But right now I'm just focusing on building out the agency even more, scaling it up. Um, but for those of you guys that, you know, like what I'm doing, just let me know, comment below. You guys can help by doing the free click funnels thing. <laughs> that's super easy and it's all almost all that you need for your for your business so anyway um hope this brought you guys some value um i'll be doing this when i do it um comment interact help you know help build my community help get this out you know so people can start to learn so hopefully it helped you like i said um follow me on instagram check me out there and, um, you know, that's it. So make sure to submit your qu questions next time. Um, I freaking answered 15, 16 questions for free. Took me, you know, take me 20, 30 minutes. So just know this takes work from me. If you want to get one-on-one, -on -one, let's do it. Let me know if you're serious. Let's do it. All right.